I'm Jess. With Black Travelers Network, where we provide trips that focus on the Black experience in different parts of the world, and we share news stories that impact the African diaspora. First things first, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And the drama regarding COVID-19 is still unfolding and heating up. One thing I try to do is present different topics to the BTN community so that those of you who are listening can begin to follow not just local and national politics, but also world politics. So when you listen to your politicians and they discuss foreign policy, we are at a complete disadvantage when we don't understand the history or the backstory of what's going on. Many of us get our news from reading headlines on social media, and that's cool, but you gotta go deeper than that. I've heard a number of people talk about the New World Order, the Illuminati, secret societies, and I get frustrated because many of us don't understand the basics, but we want to discuss conspiracy theories. And, you know, for me, that's just not my thing. I just want to talk about what is known. Everything I'm talking about today, I encourage you to take some time, look it up, verify, and drop any comments you have down below. You can also check the description box for links to various stories that relate to this video. So let's get into it. Today's story is pretty interesting, so I will try to get through it as quickly as possible. I ask that you stay until the end as I will explain to you how all of this relates to travel. You know, this whole global pandemic is like a television series or a dramatic soap opera with Bill and Melinda Gates as the leading actors and various countries and their leaders as being a part of the supporting cast. Every now and again, a country will make an appearance in the drama, and then the spotlight is on that country. So let's get into it. The world began going into lockdown in March and April of this year, 2020. But even before then, let's go back to the year 2000. That's when the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation was created. And this narrative begins in Nigeria. The foundation is the largest private foundation in the world, holding about $50 billion, not million, but billion with a B, $50 billion in assets. The primary goal of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is to enhance healthcare and reduce extreme poverty globally. And in the United States, its focus is to expand educational opportunities and access to information technology. But the Gates have been entrenched in Nigeria for more than a decade, going as far back as 2006, if not a bit before then. Their focus in Nigeria was initially on eradicating the spread of polio, which at that time, there was a particular strain of polio that was ravaging Nigeria. During this process, the Gates were able to merge both science and technology that allowed them to map the spread of polio by using a satellite GPS system. All of this is verifiable, so please don't think this is a conspiracy theory because this is not. You can look this up and find out for yourself how all of this works. But in a nutshell, it used to be in Nigeria, they did not know which areas were more prone to polio unless and until people came into the medical facilities after having experienced paralysis. But what they were able to do through the mapping technology is they were able to get samples from stool from waste that was disposed from villages all over Nigeria, send those samples to labs all over the world. And from that data, they were able to create digital maps that showed the virus concentration and where it was likely to end up next. So they were no longer reliant upon the hand-drawn maps 
or waiting to see where polio would show up next. They simply gathered the maps and were able to send out teams of vaccinators. And these teams would go all over Nigeria to vaccinate villages of people to prevent the spread of polio. Now, were there ethical issues with going to collect samples from people's bodily excretions without their permission? Absolutely. However, some would argue that the outcome of eradicating polio was worth it. So the Gates have been in Nigeria for a long time. They have put billions of dollars into the country and have influenced government officials. Here in the United States, we often hear about the corruption that exists throughout the entire African continent, particularly in Nigeria. The Nigerian government always bears the brunt of being responsible for the greatest amount of corruption, but there are a lot of hands in Nigeria and throughout the entire continent that goes beyond just African hands. And so the corruption that does exist is usually intensified because there are many players on the continent. The other interesting thing about this picture involving Nigeria is that back in January 2018, Bill Gates agreed to pay off the $76 million loan that Nigeria borrowed from Japan to fight polio. Gates and his wife Melinda announced that they will pay off this huge debt that's owed by Nigeria through their foundation over the course of the next 20 years. And that started in 2019. So these people are invested in Nigeria for the long term. They've already been there for more than a decade and absorbing this $76 million debt from Japan that's owed by the Nigerians means that they're likely to be involved in Nigeria for at least another 20 years, if not for the rest of their lives. And so if we fast forward to today and this whole global pandemic, as we all know as COVID-19, Bill and Melinda Gates' total contribution to date to the global COVID-19 response has been over $300 million. And this money has gone to various countries and organizations that are really in line with fighting the COVID-19 global pandemic. And a few days ago, there was a global telethon that raised $8 billion without the United States that is committed to the COVID-19 global fight. And the commitments were made at this May 4th coronavirus global response pledging teleconference that was hosted by the European Union. And the pledging event was co-convened by the European Union, Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, Norway, Saudi Arabia, Spain, and the United Kingdom. And of the United States was noticeably absent. And now, you know, there are a number of reasons why the United States was absent. I mean, obviously we're engaged in the fight here at home regarding COVID-19. The government has sent out trillions of dollars in aid to citizens and businesses to hopefully prevent the economy from completely collapsing. <laughs> and so there are arguments to be made as to why the United States was not a part of this telethon where all of this money was pledged. Not to mention the Trump administration is not really, they don't appear to really be in line with the politics of Bill Gates. <laughs> I, and I only say that because the Trump administration suspended funding to the World Health Organization, and this drew a lot of criticism from Gates. This is really critical for our folks to kind of not miss, because as we start to get ready for election season, 
because our presidential elections happens in early November. This is something that is and likely will be a part of the national discourse as we start to begin thinking about politics, not just here at home, but also on a, a on a global scale. It's pretty evident that Trump is not team Bill Gates. He's not for pledging all this money to fight this virus. He's just not with it. But the Democratic candidate is Joe Biden. So it's going to be interesting to see where Joe Biden stands on this because a lot of Democrats are actually very supportive of Bill and Melinda Gates. They've given money throughout all of politics. Um, I haven't actually done the research to figure out which political candidates they are mostly in line with. But at the end of the day, these folks have so much money. I don't think it's really Republican versus Democrat. I think they just fund based on who's in line with their global health agenda and their agenda to vaccinate the world. As we focus more specifically on Nigeria, now one of the biggest headlines out of Nigeria is regarding the NCDC bill. And for those of you who are not familiar with the term NCDC, all NCDC is, is the Nigerian Center for Disease Control. So there's this bill that has been introduced and has made its way through the Nigerian Congress. As of today, this bill has not been approved, but has drawn a great deal of concern from Nigerians because tucked away in the language, it gives the government a lot of power. And so just to kind of outline some of the power this particular bill gives, and a lot of the government officials are claiming they haven't seen it and they don't know what all's in it and they haven't read it. But here's what we've been able to glean from some of the reports that have come out of Nigeria that's causing a lot of people to be concerned. Number one, this bill gives the government powers to arbitrarily arrest and whatever that is necessary. So if they suspect someone is infected with an infectious disease, if they don't feel the protective equipment is in line with what they say, they can just arrest them. They don't need a warrant. They don't really even need a reason. This bill gives them ultimate power to issue arrest as they choose. And I believe this is in the context of a global pandemic or in the context of what is deemed uh, an outbreak of an infectious disease. The other thing is it gives the government and the NCDC the ability to determine that any place could be declared as an isolation center. They choose where these isolation centers are located. So if there's a particular community they want to target, they can say, okay, this community is an isolation center. That's hugely problematic. Have we not learned anything from the Holocaust? In Nazi Germany, they had isolation centers. They could arrest random people and take them off to an isolation center that we now know was a concentration camp. This is extremely concerning. How do you determine which group of people will be isolated? Where are these isolation centers going to be located? The bill also gives them the ability to destroy the isolation centers. It's like really intense language that's in this bill. The third thing is compulsory vaccination for every child. It is what it is. They want every child vaccinated, fresh out the womb, <laughs> they wanna vaccinate these children. And it empowers the NCDC to direct anyone who is not vaccinated for a disease during an outbreak to do so. And they can do so under the guise of securing public safety. The director may, by order, direct any person or class of people not protected or vaccinated against the infectious disease to undergo vaccination or any other protective measures that the government sees fit. 
very powerful. The other thing the bill speaks to is six months jail for first time offenders. So if someone violates any portion of this law, then they can be arrested without warrant or reason and jailed for six months without question under this bill. It also states that the powers for the NCDC is really unchecked. And we know that for any system, whether there's corruption or not, having any branch of government that has absolute power that goes unchecked leads to abuses of power. The last very glaring thing that this bill does is it excludes state governors in Nigeria. And so right now in Nigeria, state governors are empowered to issue quarantine regulations and other directives that are necessary. But this new bill does not recognize any of the powers for the governors. It completely leaves them out of being able to make any determination and all of that gets determined by the government. And so some say the Gates have offered $10 million to get this bill passed pretty quickly. I don't know how true that is because I have not looked that up, but this whole campaign has caused Bill and Melinda Gates to lose a lot of credibility here at home in the United States as social media has been relentless on Gates and this whole global pandemic. People have really been expressing their distaste and anger for Bill Gates' campaign during this global pandemic for mandatory vaccinations. And some have suspected that he's sort of like seen and heard the reaction of the American public and he's kind of given up on the fight here at home. And so this is why he's taking the fight beyond the United States and he's sort of rallying and gaining support all over the world. He's given out money to various countries who are likely going to be on board to help him fulfill his agenda. Particularly in Nigeria, this bill has led to the creation of the hashtag, hashtag stop the NCDC bill. And you'll see some of the tweets have been throughout this particular video. And I just want to say, those of us in the United States have to be concerned about this because, you know, Bill and Melinda Gates may not succeed here when it comes to passing legislation for something like this, but these folks think many years down the line. That's not to say that five years from now, 10 years from now, this wouldn't rear its ugly head back in our society. As we know, a lot of our politicians can easily be bought off. And the Gates Foundation have a lot of money to burn and blow and they can buy off a number of politicians without even a thought. So how does this relate to travel? These regulations, and Gates working with other countries is extremely concerning for a lot of reasons. And here's why. If this does not get passed here in the States, it could potentially affect the countries you can visit. If the States do not require you to vaccinate, but you wish to visit another country, they very well could make it a requirement for you to gain entry into their country especially the African countries. So for all of you who have hopes and dreams of visiting Africa one day, your visit may come with some conditions for you to enter. The other thing that is particularly dangerous is that one or two people have the ability to go around the world with their money, wealth, and power and control world politics and how other countries interact and do business with the United States. The fact that the United States was left out of the telethon that raised $8 billion to fight an agenda that is largely championed by the Gates Foundation is something that should raise your eyebrow. And so again, this is only act one, scene one. 
<laughs> of I'm sure many more acts to come and many more scenes to come. You know, it's very, very interesting how this is all playing out. But this provides some context because again, in November, the American people are going to have an election. And when we are starting to look at who to vote for, we have to consider their global agenda. We have to ask the question about this mandatory vaccination. This is a question that we likely would not have asked a year or two ago, but we need to find out where these politicians who want to get elected, where they stand, how they would handle a global pandemic. What are their views on how this global pandemic was done? What are their ideas around revitalizing the local economies? Like this whole global pandemic raises a whole new set of questions that we have to start asking leading into November. And we definitely need to start paying attention to who is being funded by whom in the next election. So thank you guys for listening. I know this was a lot to cover, but I appreciate you guys so much. If you like the content, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and until next time, folks. Thank you.